Hello and after yesterday's epic journey through Prince Christian Sound, we have finally made it to Quokotok. This is a town here in Greenland that has many, many Q's in its name, so we think that it's pronounced Quokotok. But if it's pronounced differently, we do apologise. <laughs> We're both really excited to get off the ship and start exploring. Now let's see what our first port of call here in Greenland has to offer. Hi, if you're new to our channel, we are Tom and Dom Travel and we release a new cruise related video every single week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a like. Our day here started off like it does every other where we ordered ourselves a couple of coffees on room service and opened those curtains. And what a view we were greeted with, cloud, mist. We couldn't see a lot at all. What we just about could see was Holland America Zuderdam docking in port as well. So we knew it was going to be busy ashore. So we quickly hurried up to the Horizon Buffet just for a little bit of breakfast. I had some cornflakes, nothing too excited. We also ordered a couple of those premium freshly squeezed juices which were included in the Princess Plus and Princess Premier package at no additional charge. Now the freshly squeezed orange juices are not listed on the juice list. However, you can request Request them and they are part of your plus or premier package. After our speedy breakfast where we just had a little bit of cereal and those juices we then headed straight to our cabin, grabbed our bags and got ready to head off the ship. Today is a tender port so we needed to collect our tickets once again from Kroonas Bar. There were four tenders in operation this morning and they'd actually started carrying passengers aboard at 7am. So we got to Crooners around about 10am. We collected our tickets, made our way down and just sat in the Princess Plaza on deck five and just waited for our number to be called. Really quite quick and efficient because we were only waiting 20 minutes. Was not too bad at all. And before we knew it, we were on that tender and heading to Quokotog through the mist. It was quite an unusual experience for us because you could hardly see anything at all. However, sailing past Island Princess and then Holland America was pretty spectacular. Now, we weren't sure whether we could get to shore today at all because of the fog, but we are so glad that we did. The first thing that we thought when we arrived in Quokotok is that it was much bigger than expected. It is really, really quite big. It is one of the largest settlements in Greenland, but we were quite surprised at just how much was actually there. The first thing that you see when you reach Quokotok is the Tourist Information Centre. Now this is the place we would recommend that you head to first because there is all the information as well as maps to explore the town. You'll also be able to pick up a number of excursions that are operated by many of the locals. This is where we first encountered some of the local people of Quokotok because they'd set up a series of stores, a little bit of a small market really, outside the Tourist Information information centre. Now we had a walk along these stores as there is some really interesting pieces that they're selling. They were offering lots of little unique gifts and trinkets, like souvenirs that have been handmade and crafted by themselves. The currency in Greenland is the Danish Corona. However, many of the shops and stalls and even the locals accept multiple different currencies such as dollars, pounds and euros. Now Quokotok is set on a hill so we knew that we had some walking to do today so we headed up to explore the town. As we weaved our way through the town past some of the most colourful houses we had seen there was lots and lots of locals about who seemed really happy to interact with us cruise passengers. They were very very friendly every single one of them that we passed said hello and had a smile on their faces we both felt really welcomed. Now some of the locals were really keen to have a chat to us and as we climbed all the way up to the top of the hill near the viewpoint we met one particular guy who was helping us with our pronunciation of Quokotok and he was really trying to get us to say it properly so we hope we've done him proud with our pronunciation. We were told before we got to Greenland that we're going to be lots of midges and insects flying about. Now near the water this was not the case at all in fact we didn't come across much in the way of insects at all but as we got higher up near to the top spa shop and where the lake is you could see some more midges and more flies about. We came to Greenland fully prepared with insect repellent and mosquito nets and we didn't actually need 
need to use them. Wasn't that bad at all, so we've hardly used anything that we can prepared with. <laughs> However, apparently we've been very lucky because you can actually be inundated with these flies, apparently. Right at the top of Crocotok, there is a small spa shop where the locals go to collect their daily groceries. But from there, there's also a little bit of a rock outcrop that you can get on top and get spectacular views of the fjord, of the ship, of the local town itself. It is a really good place to head up to if you want a panoramic view. So we climbed our way up. You could just see Island Princess and Holland America through the fog and it did look absolutely spectacular. At this point we did notice the fog was slowly starting to lift so things were getting clearer. We could see down into the port much better than we could earlier on in the day. From here we made our way back down through some of these wonderful colourful houses. They've got lots of apartments, flats, and individual houses, all different colours. It's really interesting to see how these people here live. A lot of them just going about their everyday lives. They had their washing out. Even one had a paddling pool. Never would have thought up here in Greenland we'd be looking at someone who had a paddling pool in their garden. Now at this point we came across something that showed that their lives must be completely different to us because somebody had a fresh animal skin drying on their roof. It still had the hooves on, it was that fresh. We thought, yeah, this is definitely a different way of life. At the bottom of the hill, there is a large supermarket and much larger than we ever thought they would be here for such a small place. In fact, there are three supermarkets here in Crocotop. This particular supermarket sold absolutely everything. We were really, really impressed. Mosquito nets, fridge, freezers, televisions, clothing, food, drinks, absolutely everything, just demonstrating how remote these locations are and these stores literally have to provide for all of the needs of all of the people of the town. Incredible. It, it really has to be that one-stop shop and you know that they have their delivery either by boat or helicopter. There's no other way of reaching this part of the world. The one thing we did notice was just how expensive things were. The shocker for us was the cost of chocolate and just the snack. They are super expensive. Pretty big size quality street was £55. A 70cl bottle of spirits, £55 as well. Yeah. Incredible. So expensive. All in all, this supermarket is a great place to just have a little look around. Also, if you have forgotten anything and you need to buy it, you're pretty much guaranteed to find it in one of these supermarkets. As we were leaving the supermarket, we met one of our fabulous cruise friends, Carol. Yes, from our Evenings in Explorers Lounge, we invited Carol to join us on our little tour of Quackatok. We decided that now the fog had completely cleared, the whole place was in beautiful blue sky and sunshine, we'd continue to have a little bit more of a look around Quackatok. Yeah, now the fog had cleared, it just instantly changed how the entire place looked. Now, to put this into perspective, we had worn coats, jackets, thermals, expecting it to be freezing cold in Greenland. It is not. No. It is very hot. <laughs> and, and speaking to some of the locals, apparently in the summer months, it can get up to 20 Five degrees Celsius. We had come ready for the Arctic and we should have come ready for the Med. <laughs> it was really, really warm. Yet yeah, warmer than home and we were really, really surprised. Looking out over the town, you can see icebergs just floating around in the sea. However, the sun was absolutely blazing. It was glorious and we were all so hot because we definitely overdressed. With Carol, we had another wander through the town. We looked at some of the beautiful houses once again and walked all the way to a viewpoint where we could see the lake. Now, the lake's a lovely area that is absolutely pristine. Now, because we'd been exploring the town so long, it was time to for a quick restroom break. <laughs> Here in Quokotok, there aren't many options for visiting the toilet as a member of the public. So it's important we tell you about these. Now, the first one is at the information centre right where you exit the tender. However, that gets exceptionally busy. Because it is just located from the port, it is the most popular restroom. The second one is inside some of the bars. Now, there is a couple of bars, particularly a rock bar with a huge guitar on the outside. So if you wanted to buy a drink, you could head in there. The third option and the option that we took was that you could walk around the side of the port, through the working port area, to a factory called Great Greenland. Great Greenland 
mainland is the place to go if you like seal skins. For someone coming from the UK, this is going to be highly controversial, but it has been explained to us that this is part of their way of life where they catch seals, they hunt seals, they use all the parts of the seals for their day-to-day -day subsistence life, and the skins are then produced to make clothing and other accessories that they use from day to day. For example, they were selling seal skin gloves, coats, bags, you name it, they made it out of seal skins. You have to be careful though when purchasing these items because some countries do restrict the import of seal skins. These towns and settlements within Greenland are so remote, they literally have to fend for themselves. They can't rely on any imports. Subsistence hunting is a way of life and pretty much one of the only ways in which they, they've been able to survive. However, the Great Greenland is a great place to head to if you need the toilet because they do have one of the only free rest rooms available in Quokotok. On the map that we picked up from the Tourist Information Centre, the restrooms were listed on there. After we'd been to see Great Greenland and had a little stop off to relieve ourselves, we then headed back around the side of the port where we got once again some fantastic views of the ship and of the town itself. There are a number of small little tourist souvenir shops and we popped into one just to have a look at some of the crafts and gifts that were available. Now this tourist information shop does also offer excursions, so please do not worry if you can't book a ship excursion. There are lots of locals offering trips to cruise passengers. We then decided to continue walking along the port area and we ended up in the main town square which was really interesting because it's actually got Greenland's only water fountain. I suppose because it gets so cold in the winter it would freeze. But it is a lovely pretty area just to sit and relax especially when the sun's out like it has been with us today. There's a bar and restaurant just off the square and it was very very popular with locals and tourists. Just off the square is the small town fish market. Now, once again, this is a controversial area because they were selling fish, but also they had whale meat available. And you could clearly see there were parts of whale available to buy. So at no point did we witness any killing of any animals. And just to make it clear that we did not purchase any animal products at all while we were in Greenland, even though it's part of their way of life. As people from the UK, we just don't need to do it. From the fish market, we could see that there was a church in the distance. So we kind of made our way towards it. Looked absolutely beautiful, very traditional, very colorful. However, it was closed, so we couldn't really go into it. Just behind the church was the park, which looked absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. I had a lovely little stream running through it. The stream was crystal clear water. It was absolutely stunning and they had lots of colourful flowers grown including some lovely bright poppies. There were a number of benches and seats available so you could take in the beautiful landscape. However, this wasn't a park like you would know it from home. It was very much a wild area with flowers and plants growing. We then walked through the park, crossed a bridge and over the stream and we were then at another supermarket. Yeah, so in total, there are three supermarkets, and as we previously said, they stock just about everything. We then decided to make our way back to Island Princess, and we walked along the port, but this time just on a raised little area where they've got a number of stone carvings. That include little faces, pictures of fish, pictures of whale, lots of different things. There's even a handprint into the stone, which is a nice little way to spend 10 minutes just walking along and having a little look at some of those stone carvings. When we got to the pickup for the tender, the queue was okay, wasn't too bad. I think we were waiting around about 5-10 minutes and then we were on. Straight back on the tender, this time full clear view of both Holland America ship and Island Princess. What a spectacular tender ride back, it did not take long at all. And before you knew it, we were back on the ship. We were treated to some absolutely spectacular views of both ships. Now after spending the day in port, we were quite hungry. So we headed up to the Princess Grill up on the Lido deck where we grabbed ourselves a couple of snacks. I went for a pulled pork burger. And I had a princess hot dog with some cheesy fries with bacon. It was absolutely delicious, all washed down with a nice Corona. What surprised us most was the amount of people on the Lido deck who were there sunbathing. It was like being in the med. The amount of people there with just their swimming costumes on, bikinis, swim shorts, sunbathing by the pool. If you could 
could not see icebergs floating off the side of the ship, you would believe you were in the Caribbean. It was ridiculously warm. It was an absolutely beautiful afternoon up there and both of us caught the sun as well. It was incredible. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Sunburn in Greenland. Sunburned in Greenland. It blows your mind really that you're here with such beautiful warm weather and then next thing you look off the side of the ship and there's a massive iceberg, iceberg. floating past. It just doesn't seem real. So we sat out on the pool deck for a little while just taking in the sun and the scenery. Then we thought to ourselves, why not go to Swirls and see if we can pick up one of them premium desserts to share. Now, unfortunately, by this time in the day, the vast majority of passengers that have been off exploring were now back on the ship. So the queue for Swirls was absolutely huge. Yeah, so given the good weather and the fact that most people on the Plus package now get included ice creams from Swirls, it meant that the poor girl there could not cope with the amount of people who were wanting a premium ice cream. Because these ice creams don't take two seconds to make. They are quite a creation. So for everybody who wanted one in that queue, it's going to take you some time to get an ice cream. As we left Swirls, we walked out on deck and noticed there was some smoke in the distance, but didn't pay much attention to it. But by the time we got back to our cabin and out on the balcony, this smoke had become very black and very thick. Next thing you heard was a helicopter coming overhead and we noticed it was carrying one of those water collection devices and it wasn't long before it was scooping water out of the sea and dumping it onto this fire. The trail of smoke by now was absolutely huge. It was casting a massive shadow over both Island Princess and the Holland America ship. It was really interesting to see the helicopter trying to put out this fire. And we later heard from the captain that it was meant to be a controlled burn of rubbish locally. However, this controlled burn became out of control and it engulfed a large part of that area. Fortunately, we were still able to sail away at our designated time. As we were sailing away, me and Dom both got ourselves ready for tonight's activities. Me and Dom got ready straight away and we then sat on our balcony because the sail away was just so spectacular. We passed iceberg after iceberg after iceberg, each time getting bigger and bigger. It was just amazing. It really made us understand why this part of the world is so amazing. The captain did make an announcement and he said we were going to make our way to Nanotalic, which is our next port, straight away. Essentially, it's only three or four hours away and we were going to go straight there, dock overnight and then be able to get off in the morning. It's much safer for us to head straight to the next port and dock rather than sail around icebergs all night. It makes their job a lot easier, I suppose, up on the bridge. After watching some of the sail away and those brilliant icebergs pass by, we didn't want to stop looking, but luckily for us, it was time to head down for dinner and at dinner we have a superb window seat so we could still see all those icebergs passing by. We made our way down to the Bordeaux restaurant on deck five, walked straight in, sat down at our table at our regular time of seven o'clock. Our waiter came up to us and took our orders promptly so we ordered our usual two glasses of Pinot Noir and then went in to starters. So for starters we had asked for fettuccine alfredo but our fantastic waiter advised us to try some melon and mascarpone first. So that's exactly what we did. It's absolutely delicious. Chunks of melon with honey and mascarpone cream. Mm. Beautiful. Very, very tasty. Very tasty. Almost dessert-like. Yes, very sweet. Very sweet. Then we went on to that starter of the fettuccine alfredo, one of Dom's favourite meals on board, and he has it quite regularly now. Then on to our main course, and I had one of the best main courses of the crew so far it was fantastic rack of lamb and it was spectacular the meat mm, yum really just melted in my mouth it was absolutely beautiful for my main i went for the chicken pot pie and it was delicious but once again I should have learned from my previous or our previous pie experience I should have asked for a side of vegetables. Yes when you do order a pie that's exactly what you get just the pie nothing on the side. I suppose the vegetables are in the pie. Pie was absolutely delicious it had lots of vegetables in it loads of meat loads of sauce I should have ordered a side of vegetables with it. I didn't particularly fancy anything from the main dining dessert menu so I went for a premium chocolate cake. This has to be my most favourite dessert on board and I highly recommend you try them. Tom chose to go for the flourless chocolate cake. As with all the chocolate desserts on board, this was incredibly chocolatey and very tasty.
Luckily for us, our dinner didn't take too long, so we headed straight to Explorer's Lounge tonight. No good spirits, because tonight was one of our favourite game shows of a cruise, Marriage Match. Pretty much every night at 8.30 in Explorer's Lounge, you will find one of those princess game shows, and they are absolutely incredible. Now, one of the slight criticisms we've got here on board is our evening meals tend to take a little bit longer than necessary, mm. especially in between courses. We seem to be missing in the start of these 8.30 shows. Luckily tonight, dinner didn't take too long and we got into the Explorer's Lounge. However, it was so busy in there that we had to sit right at the back. Really? But we were very lucky to get a table. Marriage Match is an absolutely hilarious game where they choose three couples to take part in some revealing questions. All done in good humour and questionable taste. <laughs> it is a really great game show to watch. Both of us were just laughing the whole of Explorers Lounge was laughing. Andy hosted the event and did lose control a couple of times, but it was it was all, all in part good fun. Of the fun. Yeah. After the marriage match game, we headed to the theatre for tonight's performance, which was a comedian and magician. Yes, he's been on a number of TV shows called David Diebel. He did a number of jokes along with a number of tricks. Unfortunately, some of them didn't seem to go quite to plan. Also, he was interrupted by the anchor dropping as we arrived in Nanotalic. As we said, it only took us a few hours to get there. Maybe he got a little bit distracted. A little bit spooked. Yeah. He did ask if it'd been an iceberg. But he was definitely an interesting watch. At the end, his highlight was teaching us how to juggle with carrier bags. One-handed. One-handed. In slow motion. Yeah. So it was definitely an interesting show. Something we'd never seen before. We'd recommend you to go and see. No, we bloody <laughs> wouldn't. Unfortunately, yes, there were a lot of distractions happening due to us docking in Nanotalic. However, many of the audience found it difficult to perhaps relate to his humour. We then headed to the Explorer's Lounge where we watched tonight's performers, Ecstasy. Now, unfortunately, only one female vocalist was there as the other one was a little bit poorly. However, the show must go on and she continued performing and she seemed to really get the kids involved tonight. She was doing the Cupid shuffle with the kids on the dance floor and they seemed to really enjoy it. Myself and Tom treated ourselves to a couple of margaritas from the menu. Mine was a little bit too sharp for me. Yes, some of these margaritas are quite strong, so just be aware that when you order them, get ready because they are quite, quite powerful. Now, after a few drinks in the Explorer's Lounge, it was getting quite late on at night and we were ready to call it a night and head to bed but Dom happened to check his Aurora app to have a look if the northern lights were out. On the app it basically gives you an indication of whether or not the northern lights are going to be visible and then on a scale of 1 to 10 how prominent they're going to be. Now fortunately for us I'd been checking all evening and we'd gone up to a number seven and the south of Greenland was in the centre so we thought Let's get out there and have a look. Myself, Dom, and a couple of other passengers that we encouraged to go up with us, Carol and John, headed up to the top deck, up to the Lido deck, where there was already a couple of other passengers up there. And sure enough, there were the northern lights right in front of us. These northern lights were streaking over the top of the mountains in Nanotalic, and you had to get your phone out to experience them in full. Surprisingly to us, the northern lights aren't as bright naturally when you see them but using your phone they look absolutely spectacular. We managed to get some amazing photos. Before we got on this cruise we really did hope that we'd be able to experience the northern lights and we just felt so lucky that just on the off chance they were there. We did go back to the cabin just to put on a few more layers because by now it was absolutely freezing yeah. and we made our way back out onto the top deck and we were out there looking at it for, for a good couple of hours. Good couple of hours out there and as Dom said we were very lucky because we are here in the summer and it's much less likely you'd see them in the summer months than you do in the winter but sure enough they were there they were spectacular and they just kept changing every time you'd look away and look back they were in a different formation it's beautiful our best tip for you is just keep checking now there were no announcements given on board it wasn't on the tvs no phone calls it wasn't announced through the pa system so please take responsibility and keep checking yourself because that was the only way that we got to see them because a lot of passengers 
Americans are so disappointed that they missed out. Now, it was quite late by this time and let's sum it up, today has been spectacular. We're in a new country, in a new port, with a new culture, new people, and we got to see the Northern Lights while icebergs floated past. Yeah, it's been an absolutely <laughs> whirlwind of a day. We've thoroughly enjoyed it. It was like something in a dream. It was just exceptional. We did order a little bit of room service and we happened to look over the edge of the balcony and Tom actually spotted a little minky whale playing by the side of the ship. We can't believe it. Even after all those northern lights that it didn't end, we were just waiting for our room service to arrive and I just opened the balcony, looked over, heard a pfft as the whales make and then there it was right in front of us playing in the water having a real great time swimming under the spotlights of the ship absolutely amazing it's been an incredible day an amazing experience and we just both feel so fortunate that we are able to do this however that's not the end even though we went to bed early hours in the morning we are already in Nanatale, already in our next port of greenland and we can't wait to see what happens tomorrow Thank Thanks for watching our day in Kokotuk on Island Princess. If you've got any questions or comments, just put them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And because this video has been so amazing, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button to never miss a video from us. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.